Even the most painful experiences can remind us what is truly important in life. We begin in Flower Mound, Texas, on the hot afternoon of July 23, 1993, as Phyllis Fraser returned home with her two sons, including two-year-old Dakota. It was up close to 100 degrees that day. Our friend Kim was applying at some different colleges, and he had asked me to fill out a reference sheet on him. Sure, did you bring it? Right. Yeah, we got to set up right over here. We all sat down to do that real quick. Mommy, I want to go swimming. Okay, honey, we'll go in just a minute, all right? Every evening, we would swim with the kids for a couple of hours before dinner. I thought that he went into his bedroom to play with his brother. There was no concern at first. We felt safe, like everyone else does. He was gone a couple minutes before I missed him. Maybe shorten it just a little That's bit. when I asked Jay to please see if he could find him. Dakota? When Jay screamed, my stomach tied up that very second. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Dakota! Dakota! Oh, my God! Get him out! Get him out quick! Oh, my God! He was bloated, and he was blue. Bring him over here. It was one of the most horrible things I'd ever seen. Farm on now one, what's your emergency? Um, we have a two-year-old boy that just found in the pool. Okay, is he is he conscious or breathing? We don't know. I just think he's like that off the ball. Have you pulled him out of the pool? Yes, yeah, somebody has him outside. It had been almost 10 years since I'd had CPR, but if he was going to have any kind of chance at all, I was going to have to give it to him. It was terrifying. Okay, he's outside. What I need you to do is go outside real quickly, find out if he's conscious and breathing, and come right back. Okay. Go do it now. Okay. While Flower Mound dispatcher Margot Eady handled the call, rescue units were sent to the scene. What I need you to do, is he still outside? Yes, he is. I need you, whoever is out there with him, to bring him to the phone or for you to take the phone to him. I had just completed the emergency medical dispatching course the night before. That was the first emergency medical call that I had received since taking the class and taking the test. You to bring him to the phone. Okay, do it now. The fire rescue unit was led by paramedic Robert Brooks. We were told while we were en route that the child was not breathing. When we have a six-minute response time to the scene, his chances are not very good from the outset. Then you have to stack on top of that the time that he's underwater, and odds are now he's not going to survive at all. Phyllis' fiancé, Jimmy Johnson, took over the call. Okay. Okay, sir. Go down there and try to get him. We need you to bring him to the phone so I can help you do CPR. Do it now. I was very upset. It was very frightening to see Dakota in this condition. Okay. They're counting right now. Three years old. Okay, put him on his back. On his back. Okay, I want you to take your hand, one hand, and place it under his neck and the other on his forehead. One hand under the neck, the other one on his forehead. Okay. Pinch his nose closed. Pinch his nose closed. Put your mouth completely over his and blow twice. Two soft breaths. Two soft breaths. Do it two at a time. Okay, and see if his chest rises. Yes, his chest is rising. Okay. Now I want you to check his pulse. Check his pulse. Take two fingers. Your two, first two fingers. Find the Adam's apple. No okay. We had been taught that this is to help people, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. I was definitely praying a lot in my head, you know, saying, please let this work. No pulse and no breathing? No. Give him two more breaths. Two more breaths, Phil. Two. Okay, now I want you them to take the heel of one hand. The heel in one hand. And put it in the center of the breastbone between the nipples. Okay, tell her to do this. Okay. If she can't do it, you go do it. When 
I was in class, they told us to be very forceful but yet understanding with them to make them do what's needed to be done. I want you to push down five times, one and a half inches. That's what she's doing. Okay, do it five times. Count for her five times. I wasn't giving him a second chance alive. I was hanging on to the one he already had. And just keep repeating it. It was very difficult for me to work on Dakota. Okay, now start a cycle of one breath, then pump five times. My next step was just to keep encouraging them so they have a strength to draw from and they don't stop. Don't give up. Keep doing it. The ambulance is on the way. But it was the longest six minutes I'd ever lived through. One breath, five pumps. One breath, five pumps. It was a situation I had no control over. We could do CPR. We could pray. But it was in my hands. If she gets tired, you take over and start, okay? Gotcha. It looked very bad for Dakota. I love him a lot. Okay, keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. Tell her to keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Five pumps, one breath. Five pumps, one breath. Five pumps, one breath. Compress about one and a half inches down into the chest. Okay, the paramedics are here. Okay. Have they taken over? They're, they're, yeah, they oh, got him. Okay, they got him? They got him. Okay, you guys did a good job and good luck. Thank you. All righty. What you got? No respiration. Okay, give me the O2 kit. The child was not breathing, but I felt a heartbeat. All right, being set up. Oh, Looks like sinus about 120. They may go ahead and survive the incident, With but pulse now what quality of life are they going to have? We got an LZ? Got an LZ set up. All right, let's get ready to move. Are they going to be in a total vegetative state? Everybody wants them to start breathing on their own, their heart rate to pick up, and then get up and go run out in the front yard and start playing. Real world is that doesn't happen except in extremely rare instances. Dakota was transferred to a care flight helicopter and flown to Children's Medical Center of Dallas while Phyllis and Jimmy drove the 25 miles. It's one of the longest rides I've ever had in my life. I was crying. I was facing arriving at this hospital to find out whether my child was alive or dead. How are you doing with the airway? Let's go ahead. Two-year-old Dakota was examined by emergency physician Tom Abramo. The fact that Dakota had started having seizures was an indication that he may have had a significant injury to the brain. Heart rate's 143. And that he may not make it out of the emergency room. All right, don't be afraid of any of the bells or the whistles. All it was one of the hardest things I ever looked at in my life. In a way, he can kind of feel what you're doing. It was hard to believe that he was alive. It was like a dream, and I just knew I was going to wake up from it, but I didn't. It just got worse. In pediatric ICU, Dr. Brett Giroir took over Dakota's care. The fact that even several days into his course, he still had significant brain swelling gave me uh, a tremendous bad feeling in my gut that this beautiful child uh, was going to have a very severely bad outcome. I think the question is not just when will he wake up, but if he will wake up. We were in his room as much as they would let us, Many things rubbing his hands. We all told him we loved him and just waited for him to open his eyes. It is by far the most difficult thing um, I have ever been through. He might have a good outcome and might wake up and might be the Dakota you knew. I was very deeply concerned that we were saving Dakota's bodily functions, but may have totally lost his brain. We're just going to have to wait and see. I do believe that there can be outcomes worse than death. He had been in the hospital 10 days before he opened his eyes. I just expected him to be the same Dakota, but the accident took his brain function all the way back to prenatal state. He could not suck a bottle. He was not able to move any part of his body. 
He was showing severe signs of brain damage. I just don't know what I do with him. But Dakota was put on this earth for a purpose, and he had not fulfilled his purpose yet. Thirteen months later, Dakota continues to undergo intensive therapy under the guidance of Dr. Frank McDonald. Your braces are fine. The determination that the therapy takes is a 100% effort. In this case, I think we saw more than that on the parents' part. Both parents were totally selfless in, in helping uh, rehabilitating. Let's Frank just walk in. The day of Dakota's accident was the last day that I worked. I left my job. But if I have to give up five years of working in the outside world so that Dakota can have a normal life, Play ball. then there's really not a question about it. Cognitively or learning, we're looking at normal levels now. But he's about 14 months old in motor skills. But I know that he's going to get there. He's determined, and I'm determined. Rolled over. I love my mommy. I do him fine. I like the Did you kick it? He is a very gutsy little guy. It's amazing how far he's come from a child who couldn't lift his head off the mattress a year later to walking with a walker and help. It's, uh, it's amazing. The initial five minutes, ten minutes, are very critical to a patient's recovery. He is alive today because of the adequacy of resuscitation at the scene. I think there is certainly hope that he will be a totally normal child. But maybe he won't ever be a normal child in the sense of what we think is normal. But that doesn't mean he can't have a wonderful, meaningful life that's important to everyone around him. I think all parents should know CPR. Most of them will spend the money to go and take Lamaze classes. Lamaze won't help you near as much as what CPR does. It's more important than any other thing you'll ever do in your life or your child's life.